He woke up. He got out of bed. He went to the restroom and took a shower. The water was cold at first. He made it warm. He took ten minutes to shower. He stepped out of the shower. The floor became wet. He grabbed a towel. He wrapped it all around him. He went to his bathroom mirror. He saw his reflection. He looked handsome. He had grown facial hair. It was time for him to shave it. He grabbed the shaving cream and poured some in his hand. He spread the shaving cream around his face. He grabbed the razor and started shaving. He cut himself by accident. It started bleeding. He was not hurt. He washed his face and applied aftershave. He put a band-aid on his cut. The cut stung him a little. He dried himself and started getting ready for work. She came back home from work. She looked at the clock and yawned. It was nine o'clock. She went to her bedroom and put on her pajamas. She got her blanket. She lied down on her bed. The room was cold. She got up and went to her closet to get extra blankets. She lied down again and covered herself. She fell asleep. She woke up in the middle of the night to get a glass of water. She drank the glass of water. She walked back to her bedroom. She yawned and fell asleep. Two hours passed. She woke up and went to the restroom. She heard a noise outside her window. She looked out the window to see what it was. It was a black cat climbing a tree. She hushed the cat. The cat ran away. She went back to bed. She closed her eyes and fell asleep. She slept very little. It was night time. He went out to walk his dog. His dog was big. The dog's name was Max. Let's go, Max, he said to his dog. He walked past his neighbor's house. He saw there were no lights in the house. His neighbor was not home. He walked past the market. There were people shopping for groceries. He remembered he needed milk. He tied Max to a pole. Wait here, Max, he said. He walked inside the market. It took fifteen minutes to buy the milk. He untied Max and continued walking. He walked back to his house. He let Max inside the house. It was time to feed Max. He served Max a bowl of dog food. Max ate it quickly. It was late. He took Max to the backyard. Max slept in a doghouse. He said good night to Max. Max barked. It was a hot day. The sun was shining in the sky. The air was sticky. It was a Sunday afternoon. Jane was thirsty. She went to the kitchen to get a drink. She opened her refrigerator. There was nothing to drink inside. Jane grabbed some lemons and a big pitcher. She cut the lemons in two. She filled the large pitcher with water. She squeezed the lemons into the pitcher of water. 
she opened her cabinet to get the sugar. She poured some sugar into the pitcher of water and lemon juice. She had made lemonade. She took a sip of the lemonade. It needed more sugar. She grabbed the bag of sugar and poured a little more. She took another sip. The lemonade tasted sweet. All it needed now was ice. She opened the refrigerator to grab some ice. There was no ice. It was a cold night. The moon was bright and round. The wind blew cold through the window. Jim got up from his couch and closed it. Jim was shivering because it was cold. He rubbed his hands together. Jim went to the kitchen. He wanted to make coffee. He opened his cabinet. He grabbed the can of coffee beans. He opened the lid. He held the can up to his nose. He took a deep breath. It smelled like fresh coffee beans. Jim loved the smell of coffee. He loved drinking coffee more. He poured the beans into the coffee maker. He grabbed a pitcher and put it under the machine. He pressed a button and it started brewing. Jim started shivering again. He moved around to warm his body. The machine took 15 minutes to finish. Jim poured the coffee into the mug. He drank it all. The coffee warmed his body. He stopped shivering. It was a cloudy day. It looked like it was going to rain. Jim put on his raincoat and rain boots. He grabbed his umbrella and left his house. He had to walk to an elementary school to pick up his sister. It was three o'clock. Jim's little sister was coming out of school. He walked along the streets. He looked at his clothes. His rain boots were black. His raincoat was green. His jeans were blue. His umbrella was red. Jim looked around as he walked. People were dressed similarly. The clouds looked dark. They were heavy with rain. Jim walked faster. Jim arrived at 3.20. The school bell would ring at 3.30. Jim needed to wait 10 more minutes. He was at the front gate. There were parents waiting alongside with Jim. The school bell rang. Children were escorted to the front gate. Jim's sister ran up to him. They hugged and walked home together. Jim and his sister were walking home from school. How was school? Jim asked. It was nice, said Jim's sister. Her name was Nancy. Nancy was seven. She had black hair. Her hair was short and straight. She also had braces. Jim forgot to bring an umbrella for Nancy. Jim and Nancy huddled together under Jim's umbrella. The rain fell lightly. Let's hurry, Jim said. Jim and Nancy walked faster. Jim stepped on a puddle. The water splashed. Nancy's pants got wet. I'm sorry, Jim said. It's okay, said Nancy. It started raining more. They soon arrived home. Lightning struck across the sky. It sounded loud. They were safe inside. Nancy's clothes were wet. 
She changed her clothes. Jim did the same. Nancy looked out the window. It was raining hard. She was glad to be inside. Jim felt the same. His stomach was growling. He had not eaten in five hours. He was starving. He went to his kitchen. He took out a loaf of bread. The bread was made from wheat. It was his favorite bread to eat. He grabbed two slices. He opened the fridge. He gathered all the ingredients. He laid them out across the table. He opened the jar of mayonnaise. It was low-fat mayonnaise. He spread it across the slice of bread. He used a knife to spread the mayonnaise. He unzipped the container of ham. The ham was honey-glazed. He grabbed four slices of ham. He put it on the bread slice. He opened the cheese container. He grabbed a slice and put it on top of the ham. He cut some tomatoes and lettuce. He put the vegetables on top of the cheese and ham. He glazed it all with ketchup and mustard. The sandwich was ready for him to eat. She woke up one morning and felt hungry. She did not eat anything last night. She got out of bed and walked into her kitchen. The kitchen was clean. She thought about what to eat for breakfast. She opened her refrigerator and took out a carton of eggs. She opened her cabinet and reached for a bowl. She cracked four eggs into the bowl. She stirred the eggs with a spoon. She turned on the stove and placed a pan on the stove. She turned the knob on the stove. The fire was lit. She grabbed a stick of butter from the fridge. She tossed the butter on the hot pan. She grabbed the bowl of eggs and threw them on the pan. She scrambled them with a spatula. The eggs cooked in minutes. They smelled delicious. Reading a book is fun. Books make you smarter. They also make you a better reader. John loves to read books. He reads books on sunny days. He reads books on cloudy days and reads books on rainy days. John has read many books. He read his first book in second grade. His teachers were very impressed. John was a good student. He had the highest grades in class. John learned a lot about reading books. He learned new words. He learned new verbs. He learned new adjectives. John reads every day. He has learned about the world. He has learned about history. He has learned about animals. He has learned about people. John loves to learn. He learns something new every day. John has many books. He has large bookshelves. They are full of books. John collects books. He has bought books at bookstores. John wants to read every book in the world. Watching television is entertaining. Sam loved watching television. He watched it 
all the time. He watched it in the morning. He watched it in the afternoon. He watched it in the evening. He loved watching it late at night. The television was always on in Sam's house. There's always something to watch on television. Sam watched cartoons. Sam watched the news. Sam watched sports. Sam watched documentaries. Sam watched movies. Sam watched sitcoms. Sitcoms were his favorite to watch. Watching television can be good for you. Watching television is relaxing. Watching television is informing. Watching television can bring people together. Sam liked watching television with friends. Sam recorded television shows. He had a device that would record shows. Sam recorded all his favorite shows. He rewatched them all the time. Sam had many recordings. Sam wants to be an actor. He wants to appear on television. It is his dream. He exercised every day. He lifted weights. He ran on the track. He rode his bicycle everywhere. He did pull-ups and push-ups. He did sit-ups and crunches. He loved being in shape. It felt great. He felt powerful. He felt vital. He felt fast. He felt attractive. It made him feel confident. People complimented his appearance. Look at those muscles, people said to him. Thank you, I work out, he replied. He wasn't always in shape. He used to be fat. He did not like being fat. He was made fun of. He had a low self-esteem. He felt unattractive. His body felt tired and heavy. He had no energy. He knew he had to change. He looked in the mirror one day. He promised himself to lose weight. He stopped eating unhealthy food. He started moving around more. He went jogging at night. He bought a gym membership. He lost weight. She ate a lot of food. She ate cheeseburgers. She ate chips. She ate sweets. Every day, she ate these types of foods. She was always hungry. She did not like vegetables or fruits. She never drank water. She only drank soda or juice. She was big. She did not exercise. She was happy about her appearance. People made fun of her. Lose weight, people said to her. Stop eating, people said to her. No, thank you, she replied. I'm happy with how I look, she said. She loved eating fattening foods. Nothing could change her diet. She went to see a doctor. The doctor told her to lose weight. She did not want to lose weight. Her doctor explained why she had to lose weight. She could die. She became scared. She did not want to die. She decided to lose weight. He saw a dog on the sidewalk. The dog looked lost. He approached the dog. 
He pats his head. Nice doggy, he said to the dog. The dog wagged his tail. The dog had a collar. He looked at the collar. It read the dog's name. His name was Spike. Spike was a small dog. He looked well groomed. Come on, Spike, he said to the dog. The dog followed him home. He brought the dog upstairs to his room. He opened a jar of dog food. He used to have a dog. He poured the dog food into a bowl. He placed it in front of Spike. Spike started eating. I'll take care of you, Spike, he said to the dog. He knew the dog did not belong to him. He printed posters of Spike. The poster said, Found Dog. He went around hanging the poster. Nobody came to find Spike. Spike was a friendly dog. He was obedient. Spike did as he was told. He only barked when threatened. He never bit anybody. Spike liked to play catch. Spike ran after the ball when it was thrown. Spike returned the ball to his owner's hand. Spike had black fur. Spike was abandoned by his previous owner. He was found by a boy. The boy took care of Spike. The boy loved Spike, and Spike loved him back. The boy walked Spike in the afternoons. Strangers loved to pet Spike. Spike liked being pet. He liked to lick people's hands and faces. Who's a good boy? Strangers said to Spike. Spike would get excited and jump around. Spike was the perfect dog. The boy never thought of abandoning Spike. Spike never ran away. Spike and the boy were friends for the rest of their lives. He was trying to catch a bus. The bus left without him. He was running. He tripped and fell. He was lying on the sidewalk. Are you all right? A girl asked. He was holding his arm. His arm hurt. I think I broke my arm, he said to the girl. The girl dialed 911. Help is on the way, the girl said. She helped him up. He sat down on a bench. He wondered why he fell. He looked down at his shoes. His laces were untied. He always forgot to tie his shoes. He never imagined breaking his arm. He started to tear. His arm was in terrible pain. The ambulance is coming soon, the girl said. She felt bad for the boy. She had broken her arm before. She knew how much it hurt. The ambulance arrived. The paramedics took the boy. Thank you, he said to the girl. You're welcome, she replied. It was three o'clock. She was learning how to roller skate. She had always wanted to learn. She could not afford to buy roller skates before. Now she was older. She had a job. She bought her first pair of roller skates yesterday. It is never too late to learn anything. She was at the park. She put on protective clothing. She wore a helmet and knee pads. Always safety first, she said to herself. 
She slipped on her roller skates. She got on her feet and skated away. She held on a railing at first. It was scary wearing roller skates. With practice, she improved. Days later, she was roller skating naturally. It was so much fun. She tripped and fell a few times. She got up every time and tried again. She never got hurt. Her helmet and knee pads protected her from injury. Roller skating was so much fun. She was lying on the beach. It felt really calm. The sun was beaming down. It was not too hot. The weather was perfect. She was lying on her stomach. She was in paradise. Suddenly, something happened. Someone ran by. Sand was kicked on her back. She was startled. She sat up to see who kicked it. There were a lot of people around. She did not see who ran by. She felt angry. Someone had ruined her moment in the sun. She lied back down. Minutes later, someone ran by again. Sand was kicked on her back. She rose instantly. She saw a kid hiding. He was laughing. She stood up and walked towards the kid. Were you kicking sand on my back? She asked the kid. The kid was scared. He started crying. She felt guilty for making him cry. Don't cry, she said. I'm sorry, the kid said. She never came back to that beach again. Tommy needed to raise money for his football team. The team needed new uniforms. Tommy needed an idea. He asked his mom for help. His mom had a good idea. Tommy's mom loved baking. She decided to have a bake sale. Tommy loved the idea. They would sell cookies and pies. They planned the bake sale. It would be next Saturday. Tommy needed to raise two hundred dollars. Tommy and his mom got to work. Tommy baked different kinds of cookies. He baked chocolate chip cookies. He baked oatmeal cookies. He baked sugar cookies. Tommy tasted the cookies. The cookies were delicious. His mom baked different kind of pies. She cooked cherry, apple, pecan, and blueberry pies. All the cookies and pies were sold. Tommy raised a lot of money. He raised over two hundred dollars. The bake sale was a success. The day of the math test was next Monday. He had three days to study. He did not like math. It was the hardest subject. He had to study in order to pass. He locked himself in his room. He turned off his phone. He shut off his computer. There could be no distractions. He left his radio on. Music helped him study. Every day he studied for hours. After two days he stopped. He needed help. He could not solve a math problem. He called his friend. His friend was good at math. He asked his friend if he could help. His friend said yes and came over. 
his friend helped him study for three hours. He was ready to take the test. His friend wished him good luck. The day of the test came. He took the test. He passed the test. Studying had paid off. She was graduating from high school. She was excited. Graduation was in one week. She had to prepare for graduation. She went to the store. She bought makeup and hair products. She wanted to look her best. Next, she had to buy her graduation gown at her school. The gown was dark blue. It looked nice. She took it home. She hung it in her closet. Graduation was three days away. She was proud of graduating. Her family was also proud. She was the first one to graduate from high school in her family. It was a big accomplishment. She planned to go to college. Graduation day came. She got dressed and ready. Soon she was at the event. Her family was there. They watched from a distance. They called her name. She went to pick up her diploma. The audience cheered. Her family was happy. She was happier. Yogurt tastes sweet. Ice cream is also sweet. She likes to eat yogurt. Her friend likes to eat ice cream. Her friend is a guy. His favorite flavor of ice cream is chocolate. He does not like yogurt. Her favorite flavor of yogurt was strawberry. She did not like ice cream. One day, she asked him a question. Have you tried chocolate flavored yogurt? Her friend decided to try it. They went to a yogurt shop together. He bought a cup of yogurt. It was chocolate flavored. He sprinkled peanuts on his yogurt. He tasted the yogurt. He liked it. He asked her a question. Have you tried strawberry flavored ice cream? She said she didn't and wanted to try it. One night, they went to an ice cream shop together. She bought an ice cream cone. It was strawberry flavored. She tasted the ice cream. She liked it. They both now liked ice cream and yogurt. Lisa likes to draw. She also likes to paint. Drawing and painting are similar. She draws with a pencil. She paints with a paintbrush. Lisa draws many things. She draws cats. She draws vases. Lisa also draws people. Drawing is easy for Lisa. Lisa is a good drawer. Lisa is also a good painter. She paints landscapes. She paints sunsets. Lisa also paints people. Painting is more difficult than drawing for Lisa. Painting requires patience. Drawing is fast for Lisa. Lisa wants to be famous one day. Lisa paints every day. She draws every other day. Lisa paints in her room. Her room is full of art supplies. Her clothes also have paint. Lisa does not mind. Her favorite color is green. Green is the color of leaves. 
Lisa loves nature. She is painting a big tree. He heard his name. He turned around. Hello, who is there? he asked. He was working late. It was his turn to close the store. He was alone. He was at the register counting money. It was midnight. He was sleepy. His feet were tired. He had been standing for eight hours. He was almost finished. He turned around again. He heard footsteps. He was scared. He put the money down. He started walking towards the footsteps. Who is there? he said. No one replied. He saw movement. It was a person. I see you, he yelled. The person appeared. He started laughing. It was his girlfriend. She surprised him. What a nice surprise, he said. She was laughing too. He finished counting the money. They went home together. Oatmeal is good for you. It has fiber. Fiber is good for you. It keeps your colon clean and healthy. Oatmeal also contains whole grain. Whole grain is also good for you. It reduces the risk of heart diseases. It is recommended you eat 48 grams of whole grain every day. Oatmeal is easy to make. First, you grab a clean bowl. Second, you pour one serving of oatmeal into the bowl. Third, you pour a cup of milk into the bowl. Lastly, you put it in the microwave for three minutes. You can also cook it on the stove. Milk is also good for you. It contains calcium. Calcium is good for your bones. Oatmeal is a delicious breakfast. Sally was petting her cat. Her cat's name is Kitty. Kitty is a large black cat. Sally ran her finger down Kitty's back. She loved her cat. Her cat smelled like shampoo. She had been washed that morning. Cats do not like water. Kitty, on the other hand, liked water. Kitty was a friendly cat. Sally was on her bed. Kitty fell asleep. Sally was thirsty. She did not want to wake up Kitty. She picked up her cell phone. She called her little brother. She whispered into the phone and said, Get me a glass of water, please. Her brother said, Okay. He was downstairs watching television. He went to the kitchen. He got a glass of water. He took it upstairs to his sister's room. He did not know Kitty was asleep. He slammed the door open. Kitty woke up and ran away. He went to the furniture store. He needed a new couch. His old couch had broken. He walked around the store. He saw different couches. There were a lot of couches. He did not know which to buy. He saw a blue couch. It looked comfortable. He sat down on it. He stood up. He did not like it. He saw another couch. It was red. It looked soft. He sat on it. 
He rose to his feet. He did not like it. A person walked up to him. The person was a salesman. Can I help you, sir? asked the salesman. He told him he needed a couch that was comfortable. The salesman showed him a couch. The man tested it. He liked it. The couch passed the test. He bought it and took it home. It was the 4th of July. It came once a year. It is a day of celebration. It was Tom's favorite holiday. Tom bought many fireworks. His family had gathered together. They were all on his front yard. His nephew was excited. He was six years old. He wanted to light the fireworks. Tom handed him a sparkler. Be careful with that, Tom said to his nephew. I will, Uncle Tom, his nephew said. The fireworks started lighting up the sky. Tom and his family saw different colors of fireworks in the sky. They saw blue fireworks. They saw red fireworks. The fireworks were loud. They exploded in the sky. Everybody loved the fireworks. Tom was cooking hot dogs and hamburgers. He went inside his house. And came back with coke and plastic cups. Everyone ate and drank soda. The 4th of July is a fun holiday. Thanksgiving is a national holiday. It is celebrated once a year. Mark loved Thanksgiving. It is his favorite holiday. Every year he cooks a turkey. Mark's wife helps him. Mark cooks other dishes too. He makes stuffing, potato salad, and ham. Mark invites his family to his Thanksgiving. Mark has a large family. Mark's wife also invites her family. She has a small family. Everybody brings food to the table. There is always leftover food the next day. The doorbell rings. Mark invites his family inside. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody says to each other. The food is cooked. They wait for Mark's in-laws to arrive. The doorbell rings. Mark's in-laws come inside. Everybody sits at the table. The food is served. Everybody is smiling and talking. Everybody begins to eat. Thanksgiving is a festive holiday. David ran a marathon. He could not believe it. It was a big achievement. Running a marathon is not easy. David had to train all year long. David woke up every morning. He would put on his running shoes, drink a lot of water, and run out the door. David ran for hours. He stopped only when he finished. David ran again at night. He had a lot of energy. He never got tired. Running a marathon took a long time. David ran 26 miles and 385 yards. It took 5 hours and 30 minutes to finish. David was exhausted when he finished. He was really thirsty. He drank a gallon of water. He was still thirsty. David was happy. Running a marathon had been his wish. He could not wait to run it again next year. It was a beautiful day. 
Joe went to the park. There were people everywhere. Joe saw many things. He saw a boy riding a bike. He saw a girl swinging on a swing. He saw a family having a picnic. He saw a man playing the guitar. It was a happy sight. Joe took a deep breath. The air was fresh. The smell of flowers was in the air. The trees were swaying in the wind. Joe felt so alive. Joe heard a bell. He looked around and saw the ice cream man. He reached in his pockets. He grabbed three dollars. Hey, ice cream man! Joe yelled. The ice cream man stopped and turned around. He walked towards Joe. One ice cream, please, Joe said. The ice cream man handed Joe an ice cream bar. Thank you, said the ice cream man. Joe paid and went on his way. It was a sunny day. Everything was perfect. She went inside the music store. The music store sold all kinds of things. It sold records, compact discs, posters, and clothing. She loved listening to music. Her favorite kind of music was jazz. She collected old jazz records. Her collection had hundreds of records. She started collecting records at a young age. She was fifteen when she got her first jazz record. Her dad had given it to her. It was a birthday present. She fell in love with jazz music that day. There was a special guest at the music store. He was a famous jazz artist. She was excited to see him. She owned all his records. His name was Miles Davis. He was a musical genius. She brought one of his records. It was her favorite record. There was a line to see the jazz artist. She waited in line. She met Miles Davis. He smiled and signed her record. She could not believe what had happened. A man was crossing the street. He was an elderly man. He walked like a turtle. It took him a long time to cross every day. He crossed the same street. Every time, he took a long time. The cross lights turned green. He was still crossing the street. Cars would honk at him. The man did not care. He could not cross any faster. Where is that man going? People would ask. No one knew where he went. The man walked with a cane. He had white hair and glasses. He crossed the street one day. A boy was standing on the corner. Where are you going? The boy asked. I don't know, replied the man. The old man was lost. Somehow he would find his way back home every day. It was a cold day. The wind was blowing. He was in his car. He was waiting for his friend. His whole body was shivering. He turned on the car's heater. It started heating the car. Suddenly, it stopped. He turned it on again, but the heater turned off again. It had stopped working. He was really cold. He had a sweater on, 
but it was not enough. He forgot to wear his jacket. How could I warm myself? He thought to himself. He remembered he had something in his trunk. He opened the car door and stepped out. It was even colder outside the car. There was no one outside. He opened his car trunk. There was a jacket. The jacket was old and smelly. He did not care. It was so cold. He put on the jacket. He went back inside the car. His friend finally arrived. He went to the mall. He needed clothes to wear. Summer was nearing. He brought a list. It was a list of clothes to buy. He looked at the list. He needed t-shirts. He entered a store. The name of the store was Summer Shirts. He bought ten shirts. They were different colors. Three of the shirts were blue. Another three were red. Two of the shirts were white. The last two were black. He crossed shirts off his list. He needed pants. He walked into a store. The name of the store was Fancy Pants. He purchased five pairs of pants. Two pants were blue jeans. Another two were tan slacks. The last ones were brown khakis. He crossed pants off his list. He just needed shoes. He walked into a shoe store. He saw sandals. He bought sandals instead of regular shoes. He was now ready for summer. He bought a computer. It was a laptop. The laptop was expensive. It cost him several hundred dollars. He saved up money. It took him four months to save enough. He earned his money. He worked at a restaurant after school. The job was hard. He was determined to buy a computer. He never quit his job. He went to the Best Buy to purchase it. He walked in with the money in his hand. He knew which computer he wanted already. He paid for the computer and took it home right away. He opened the box. He lifted the computer gently from the box. It's beautiful, he said. The laptop was sleek. It looked nice. It was the happiest day in his life. He turned it on. He logged on the internet. She was popular. Everybody at school knew her name. She liked the attention. She was pretty. She had blonde hair. It was long and straight. She wore expensive clothes. She wore classy perfume. She put on pricey makeup. All the other girls were jealous of her. All the guys liked her. She was not interested in being a, in a relationship with anybody. One day, her parents told her a surprise. They said they were moving. She was devastated. She moved the next week. They drove to Colorado. She went to a new school. She was not popular anymore. Nobody knew her name. Nobody liked her. No one was jealous of her. 
She was just an ordinary girl now. She was sad at first. She soon felt happy. It was a nice change. It was nice being a regular person. She did not miss being popular any more. He was the king. He was a kind ruler. He gave to the poor. He fed the hungry. He healed the sick. The people loved their king. Their king had an army. His army was vast. It protected the kingdom. Invaders would attack. The king's army was strong. They battled with swords and shields. They never lost a battle. The king was proud of his army. He was proud of his kingdom. The king was rich. He had all the gold in the world. Gold made the king greedy. He wanted more. He searched for gold in the world. His army brought him silver. He did not want silver. He wanted gold. The king grew mad. His people revolted. The king was overthrown. The king was banished from his kingdom. He left this world. She liked to talk. Talking was easy for her. She talked to friends. Hello, how are you? Her friends replied, I am fine. She was always polite. Bless you, she would say when someone sneezed. Have a nice day, she would say after saying goodbye. She was a good talker. She was skilled at talking. She talked all the time. She talked over the phone. She talked during class. She talked at her work. Her job was to talk. She helped customers buy things. Can I help you, sir? She would ask. Every day she talked to customers. She was always helpful. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me, a customer said one day. You are very welcome, she said and smiled. Talking is a good skill to have. She practiced it every day. The world is a big place. There are hundreds of millions of people in the world. People live all around the world. There are many places in the world. We live in the United States. The United States is famous for democracy. There are many people living in the United States. People from the United States come from different places in the world. Canada is another place in the world. Canada is known for its clean air. England is another place in the world. People speak English in England. People in England have accents. England has a queen. Africa is another place in the world. Africa has wildlife. Africa has more wildlife than other places. Lions and elephants live in Africa. Africa is a beautiful place. There is beauty in every place in the world. She walked into a restaurant. It was lunchtime. She was hungry. She sat down at a table. The waiter handed her a menu. What would you like to drink? The waiter asked. She asked for water. 
She was on a budget. She stopped buying drinks. Water was always free. She liked eating fish. She looked at the menu. There was no fish. She called the waiter. Do you serve fish? She asked. No, I am sorry, the waiter said. She was disappointed. She looked at the menu again. She needed time to think. The waiter left. She did like chicken. She did not like beef. She did not even like pork. She was a picky eater. She made up her mind. The waiter came back. She ordered lamb. The waiter wrote it down. He smiled and left. She ate lamb for lunch. Tom was a black cat. He was a house cat. He never went outside. He was kept well fed. Tom always got attention. He was a spoiled cat. Tom was sleeping. He heard a sound. It came from the window. He stood on his four legs. He meowed. He went to the window. He looked outside. There was another cat. The cat was white. Tom jumped out the window. He landed on his feet. Cats always land on their feet. The white cat saw Tom. The white cat was a girl. Tom walked towards the white cat. She ran away. Tom chased her. They ran around the house. Tom was having fun. The white cat ran away. Tom did not catch her. It was getting dark. Tom climbed back inside his window. It was a fun day for Tom. She coughed. She was sick. She had the flu. She did not know how she caught it. She went to see her doctor. She did not like the clinic. The clinic was small and damp. There were always people waiting. She sat in the waiting room. Kids were running around. People were sitting next to her. They were coughing and sneezing. She was coughing and sneezing, too. She felt terrible. She waited for hours. They finally called her name. She quickly went to the nurse. The doctor will see you now, the nurse said. She went into a small room. She sat down on a bed. The doctor walked in. Hello, Susan, the doctor said. She told him she had the flu. The doctor checked her symptoms. He gave her a prescription. Feel better, the doctor said. Thank you, doctor, she said. John sat on the porch playing his electric bass. He had a brother called James. James played guitar. He played it every day. He played the guitar well. Sometimes John and Jim made music together. John sang the melody. Jim sang the harmony. They both played their instruments together. They made beautiful music. The music was catchy. Strangers noticed Jim and John playing music. They would walk closer to the porch to listen to the music. John sang country music. Everybody in the neighborhood loved it. 
Country music was their favorite kind of music. Jim and John lived in Texas. Texans love country music. John and Jim were talented. When they grew older, they did not stop making music. They recorded their songs. The songs were heard on the radio. Jim and John became country music stars. She turned on the radio. She tuned in her favorite radio station. The station played pop music. She loved pop music. She sang along to the radio. She sang in the shower every morning. She jumped in the shower. She sang her heart out. She stepped out of the shower. She grabbed the radio. She took it to the room. She turned it on again. She put on her clothes while listening to the radio. She did not stop singing. Her brother did not like her singing. Be quiet, he would yell. She could not hear him because the radio was too loud. She wanted to be a pop singer. It was her dream. She wanted to make her dream come true. She entered singing contests. She won first place. She was a great singer. It was time for the camping trip. He was scared. He was scared of bears. He did not want to be eaten. He was also scared of bugs, ghosts, and poison ivy. His family packed a bug spray and a first aid kit. His brother told him ghosts were not real. He was still scared of everything. It was his first time camping. He was also excited. He brought his journal. He wrote in the journal. Dear Journal, I hope I do not get eaten by a bear. It was his worst fear. Bears were huge. He saw one on television. They had sharp teeth. They had big claws. They roared loudly. It was the night before the trip. He could not go to sleep. He could not stop thinking about the bear. He went to sleep. He dreamed about bears. It was not a nice dream. He woke up. He was tired. He had a hard time going to sleep. He tossed and turned all night. He was scared. He had bad dreams. He dreamed about bears. It was the first day of the camping trip. It was early morning. He hid in his blankets. His family called his name. Henry, it's time to get ready, called the family. He ignored his family. He did not want to go. He stayed in bed. He was excited about going camping before, but now he was too scared. I do not want to go any more, he said. His dad came in his room. He took off Henry's blankets. He picked him up. He put his clothes on. He put him in the car. Do not be scared, he said to Henry. Henry was still scared. The camping trip lasted three days. Henry was not scared. There was nothing to be scared about. There were no bears. It was a nice camping trip. He liked her. He liked her smile. He liked her voice. 
He liked her hair. He liked her nature. She did not know that he liked her. She did not know him. He was a stranger to her. It did not matter for him. He wanted to talk to her. He waited for the right time. She was always with her friends. He waited until she was alone. She was walking down the street. She was going home. She was alone. He was driving to the store. He saw her. He drove up to her. She turned around. She saw him in the car. Hello, what is your name? He said. She ignored him. She did not want to talk to strangers. Would you like a ride home? He asked her. No, thank you, she replied. He parked his car. He got out of his car. He walked up to her. She was standing on the sidewalk. He stood in front of her. I have to go home, she said. She walked past him. He followed her. He wanted to talk to her. She did not know him. She did not want to talk to strangers. I know you, he said to her. She stopped walking. She looked at him. She had a puzzled face. We went to school together, he said. She tried remembering. She could not remember him. It was such a long time ago. He told her more. He said he always liked her. He liked her during school. He liked her after school. She was struck. She did not know what to say. Want to go out? He asked her. She thought about it. She gave him her phone number. She smiled and left. He was happy. He smiled. He woke up late. His alarm rang, but he did not hear it. He was late for work. He jumped out of bed. I'm so late, he said. He ran to the restroom. He quickly brushed his teeth. He hopped in the shower. He took a five-minute shower. He dried his body. He quickly shaved. He cut himself. He shaved too fast. He was not careful. He washed his cut. He covered it with a band-aid. He ran to his closet. He grabbed his suit. He ironed it fast. He put on his suit. The suit still had wrinkles. He got in his car and drove away. There was traffic on the road. He honked his horn. He arrived at his company. He was one hour late. The bell rang. She was not at school. She was still at home. She was in bed sleeping. She stayed up late with her friends last night. They watched movies. Her school called her parents. Your child did not go to school. Mom was surprised. She was upset. She was at work. She went back home. She slammed through the door. Wake up, she yelled at her daughter. You are late to school, Mom said. She got up from bed. She changed quickly. She was scared of her mom. 
She knew she was serious. Mom did not fool around. She drove her to school. Do not be late to school again, Mom said. Okay, Mom, she said. She was still sleepy. Today was a big day. Five friends had planned to go out. The plan was to go to a restaurant. It was a good restaurant. It served all-you-can-eat food. Everybody was excited. They had gone there before. It was their favorite restaurant. The restaurant was far. It took one hour to drive there. It took two hours on the bus. One of the friends drove a car. He had just purchased it. He drove his friends to the restaurant. There was no traffic on the way. They arrived in 30 minutes. Everybody was starving. They ordered their food. The restaurant was full of customers. The restaurant was special. It served raw food. You had to cook your own food. There was a grill on the table. It was fun. Everybody ate a lot of food. The bill was expensive. It was their one-year anniversary. They went to the theater. He met her at the theater. She was with her friends. He was with his friends. They watched the same movie. They met after the movie. He asked her out on a date. They became good friends. The theater was empty today. They walked to the counter. They looked up at the screen. The screen listed the movies playing. He wanted to watch an action movie. She wanted to watch a comedy. The two talked to each other. They were deciding what movie to watch. They chose to watch a comedy. They bought their tickets. They went to their seats. The movie started. They laughed throughout the movie. The movie was very funny. It lasted one hour and a half. It ended and the credits started rolling. They got up from their seats. They went home laughing. Monday is the first day of the week. He did not like Mondays. He had to go to work. He worked at the post office. The post office was far away. He drove to work. It was a 30-minute drive. Mondays were the worst. Tuesdays were just as bad. He did not like Tuesdays. He complained at work. It is barely Tuesday, he would ask. He could not wait for it to be Friday again. Wednesdays were better than Tuesdays. Wednesdays were far better than Mondays. Wednesday is known as the hump day, which means it is the midpoint of the week. Wednesday is the day after Tuesday. He still did not like Wednesdays. Thursdays were better. He liked Thursdays. Thursday is the unofficial start of the weekend. Thursday is the day after Wednesday. More importantly, it is the day before Friday. Friday is his favorite day of the week. 
Lisa bought a car. It was her first car. She was happy when she bought it. It was a birthday present. Her parents bought it for her. She was thankful. She deserved the car. She was a good girl. She was a good student. She listened to her parents. She never got in trouble. She was a good daughter. The car was pink. Pink is her favorite color. Pink is a girl's color. She was a nice girl. Her car was not cheap. Her parents did not pay for it all. They paid half. She was to pay for the rest. She had to get a job. She learned to drive. She got a job. She drove to work. She was an adult now. Lisa was responsible. Her parents were proud of her. She was not their little girl anymore. He was getting ready for the party. The party was at night. It was going to be a big party. All his friends were going. He never went to parties. This was his first time going to one. He was nervous. He was excited. He was a shy guy. He did not talk a lot. He had only five friends. His friends were shy too. They did not want to be shy anymore. He got ready for the party. He dressed himself nicely. He combed his hair. He brushed his teeth twice. He trimmed his mustache. He looked in the mirror. He looked good. He spoke to himself. Hey, good looking, he said in the mirror. He was ready. The party was in thirty minutes. He left early. He drove to the party. He had a blast. He made new friends. He met a girl. He kissed her. It was a fun party. It was early morning. The sun was just over the horizon. She got on the bus. The bus was smelly. It smelled foul. Bus fare was one fifty. She paid her fare. Good morning, said the bus driver. Good morning, she said back. The bus driver was friendly. This was odd. She mostly met mean bus drivers. She wondered why. The bus was full. She looked around for seats. There were no seats in the front. She looked to the back. There was one seat available. She made her way to the back. There were a lot of people. Excuse me, she said. She touched elbows with people. The people let her through. She reached the back of the bus. Her seat had been taken. She held onto the pole and stood. It was a brand new day. She was happy. It was her first day of university. The bus rode on. He took a deep breath. He looked down. The water looked cold. He was nervous. Come on, jump, said his friends. He was on a ledge of a cliff. It was a big drop. All his friends had jumped. They were swimming in the water. His friends waited for him. Fifteen minutes had gone by. 
he had not jumped. What are you, chicken? teased one of his friends. He was scared indeed. He imagined bad things. He imagined breaking his bones. He imagined drowning. He imagined being eaten by a fish. I don't think this is a good idea, he said to his friends. His friends then told him not to do it. They were worried. He stepped off the ledge. He climbed down. He safely got in the water. He was safe. He was relieved. They were on a train. He sat across from her. He looked at her. She looked familiar. She was writing on her iPad. She looked concentrated. The train sped along its tracks. It made large sounds. There were many passengers on board. He looked to his right. He saw a man with long hair. He saw a woman holding a dog. He saw a kid with food on his face. He looked to his left. He saw an old man with a cane. He saw a young lady crossing her legs. He saw a fat man eating peanuts. No one looked familiar except her. She sat in front of him. He thought for a minute. He could not remember. The train had come to a stop. It had reached its destination. Passengers were exiting the train. He lost sight of her. He looked around to see where she went. She was nowhere in sight. It had been a long train ride. Her bottom was sore. She stretched her legs and neck. She grabbed her luggage. She got off the train. She headed towards the street. She called a cab. She entered the vehicle. Welcome to San Francisco, said the cab driver. She smiled and said, Thank you. She was finally home. It had been a while since she left home. The cab arrived at her house. She paid him the fare. Thank you very much, he said. He drove away. She entered her house. Her house looked pleasant. Nothing had changed. She walked into the living room. Her family awaited her in the living room. They were excited to see her. Welcome home, Becky, her family yelled. She hugged and greeted everybody. It was nice to be back home. He tried the roller coaster ride the first time. He did not like it. He tried it a second time. He still did not like it. They say, third time's the charm. He went back in line. The lines for roller coasters were long. Everybody he knew loved riding roller coasters. Everybody loved them except him. He thought roller coasters were terrifying. He did not know what the big deal was. Why risk your life, he thought. He was waiting in line. People in line were impatient, but he was not. The line moved forward. His turn for the ride came. He was strapped on the roller coaster. Please keep your hands and legs together, he was told. The roller coaster began moving. It slowly ascended to the top. It plummeted to the bottom. He vomited all over himself. 
The big race was tomorrow. He would be competing with people from other schools. It was his first big race. He was worried, but he was also excited. He was the fastest boy in his school, and he had been training for months. He had been running for a long time. He joined track when he was in middle school. He loved running. He ran everywhere. He ran to the market to pick up groceries. He ran to school in the mornings. He ran back home after school. He ran to his friend's house. His friends lived far away. He did not mind running. Running was his passion. It was the night before the race. He had a good night's sleep. In the morning, he woke up ready. The race was in a couple of hours. He got ready. He was not nervous anymore. He was prepared to race. Everybody has friends. Some people have many friends. Others have only a few. Alex had many friends. He liked making friends. Every day he made new friends. Alex was good at making friends. He was good at small talk. He was not at all shy. Alex made friends everywhere he went. He made friends at the store. Shopping for food? He asked a stranger. I sure am, the stranger said. Alex continued talking to the person. He had made a new friend. He made friends at the bank. Making a deposit? He asked another stranger. Yes, sir, the stranger replied. A conversation followed. Making friends was easy for Alex. He was a friendly guy. Everybody who knew Alex liked him. Everybody that Alex knew was his friend. Alex did not know any strangers. If he met one, they quickly became friends. Alex wanted to have all the friends in the world. Susan had a garden. She planted fruits and vegetables. The garden was in her backyard. Her backyard was wide and long. She had plenty of space. Susan's garden took up most of the space. Her garden grew several kinds of fruits. It grew watermelons, grapes, strawberries, avocados, oranges, and papaya. Some fruits grew from the ground. Others grew on trees. Susan's garden also grew several kinds of vegetables. It grew tomatoes, potatoes, squash, carrots, and eggplants. Susan was proud of her garden. She worked hard to maintain it. Every day, she watered her garden. Her fruits and vegetables tasted great. It was because of her care and love. Everybody in her neighborhood ate from her garden. Susan sold the fruits and vegetables at low prices. She made good profit. Susan did not sell it all. She always kept enough for herself. She knew that fruits and vegetables were good for her health. He dreamed a lot. He had good dreams. He had bad dreams. Sometimes he had strange dreams. He dreamed he was a cowboy. He rode a horse and gunned down bandits. 
He dreamed of being an astronaut. He orbited the Earth in a spaceship with zero gravity. These were good dreams. He dreamed he was in a room full of people. In the dream, he was naked. Everybody in the room laughed at him. He dreamed he was on a boat in the middle of the ocean. He was lost at sea. The boat was sinking. These were bad dreams. He dreamed of unknown places, places that seemed bizarre. He dreamed of worldly creatures that looked like humans. These were weird dreams. His dreams were fascinating. He wondered what they meant. He wrote down his dreams in his journal. He kept it safe in a box. Sweat poured down his face. The sun beat down his back. Every step he took was tiring. He was worn out. He kept moving forward. It was a steep hill. He looked up ahead. There were more hills. He was hiking up a canyon. There were rocks everywhere. He saw a stream below. The plants were all around. He had been hiking for over an hour. He was high up. The view was wonderful. He could see for miles and miles. He saw wildlife in the distance. He had not reached the very top. He needed to hike for one more hour. He took a drink from his canteen. He reached into his backpack. He pulled out a banana and ate it. He pressed on. The hills were slippery. He almost slid a couple of times. He got to the top. He looked around. It was breathtaking. Rainwater dripped down the window. Lightning flashed from the sky. There was no one outside. There was a storm coming. He had a plan for tonight. The plan was canceled because the coming storm outside looked gloomy. The sidewalks were wet and looked gray. The trees swayed back and forth. The wind was blowing hard. There were tree branches and leaves on the ground. He was safe inside his home. He turned on his television to watch the five o'clock news. The weatherman came on. He warned everyone to stay inside. The storm was to last all through the night. It was cold inside his home. He turned on the heater. Thunder roared from outside. Suddenly, the light went out. There was no more electricity. He lit some candles and grabbed a flashlight. The storm was going on. He fell asleep on the couch. He woke up in the morning. The storm had ended. It was a sunny day. There were five of them. They were good friends. What time is it? One of them asked. It was almost nine o'clock. They all looked at each other. It was time to leave. They were all excited. They entered the car. One of them drove. Everybody put on their seat belts. The radio was turned on. Rock music blared loudly. The car drove off into the distance. It was a road trip to San Francisco. It was everybody's first road trip. It was going to be a long trip. They brought snacks and drinks. They planned to stay for a week in San Francisco. It was a fun trip. They laughed and sang along to the radio. They stopped to eat at diners. 
They planned where to go next on a road trip. He went to a bicycle shop. He wanted to buy a bike. His old bike was too old. It had stopped working. He entered the bike shop. There were bikes all around. There were bikes on the walls. There were bikes in the aisles. Some bikes were even hung upside down from the ceiling. He knew what bike he wanted. He approached the salesman. He told him what bike he wanted. The salesman took him to a room. There were more bikes in the room. He liked what he saw. He quickly chose a bike to buy. It was a small black bike. He paid for it and rode it home. It cost him five hundred dollars. It was worth the price. He used the bike for tricks and stunts. He never fell. He was a professional bike rider. She went to the library. It was close to home. The library was quite small, but it was a nice library. She needed to check out a book. It was a book for her school. She did not want to buy it. It is free to check out books at the library. The library is open to the public. Libraries provide access to knowledge. She walked inside the library. It was nice and quiet. The library was also cool. She went to the front desk. She asked for her book. A librarian helped her find it. She was thankful for the help. The librarian was happy to help. She talked to the librarian. They spoke about libraries and librarians. It was an interesting conversation. She learned a lot of things. She left the library and went back home. The librarian had inspired her. She wanted to be a librarian one day. He was from Tennessee, but he did not want to stay there. He traveled all around. He left at the age of eighteen. He had no money. He had no car. He hitchhiked to California. His family could not stop him because he was an adult. It was his dream to wander. He was a good-looking man. He did many odd jobs. He met many people. California is a big state. There are a lot of people in California. He lived in different places. He never stayed in one place. He kept traveling. He did not think about the future. He lived his life one day at a time. He did not have many belongings. He had a small backpack. It held his clothes. He had a guitar and a picture of his parents. This was all he carried. One day, he would go back home. He drove to the airport. He waited for his flight. He waited for an hour. His flight was ready. He boarded the airplane. The airplane was huge. It was going to Boston. He had family in Boston. He lived in Los Angeles. He was a teacher. He taught at a community college. He loved his job. His family was proud of him. He was going to see them. It was a family reunion. He looked forward to seeing everybody. Five years had passed since he was in Boston. He brought sweaters and jackets because Boston was cold at this time of year. The airplane took off. 
His ears popped. He put on his headphones. The flight lasted six hours. He arrived safely in Boston. He got off the airplane. He stepped on the ground. It was a long flight. There was a baby crying on the flight. He could not sleep. He exited the airport. He called a taxi. It drove him home. He paid the taxi driver and thanked him. He looked at his house. He was glad to be home. The lights were on inside. He saw shadows through the window. His family reunion had started. He knocked on the door. His father opened the door. Welcome back home, Greg, he said, smiling. He went inside. He greeted everybody. He said hello to cousin Alex. He hugged and kissed his grandmother. He shook the hand of his brother-in-law. He hugged his sisters and brothers. He was overjoyed to see his mother. His mom gave him a big kiss. It was a good family reunion. He did not want to go back to California. She put on her best shoes. She put on her nicest shirt. She got into her dress pants. She brushed and straightened her hair. She applied her makeup. She sprayed perfume on herself. She was ready for her job interview. She looked in the mirror one more time. She looked professional. She grabbed her purse and walked out the door. She entered her car and drove away. The interview was on the sixth floor of a building. She took the elevator. She entered the interview room. She was greeted by four people. They were all dressed in suits. The interview began. They asked her hard questions. She answered the best she could. She was confident and friendly. They liked her. She got the job. She was overjoyed. The mailman knocked on the door. No one answered the door. He had a package to deliver. He needed the person's signature. It was a heavy package. He rang the doorbell. Still, no one answered. He looked through the window. There was someone inside. A girl was napping on the couch. He knocked on the window. The girl was sound asleep. He used his voice. He called her name. She woke up. She saw the man through the window. She opened the door. She asked who he was and what he wanted. I'm the mailman, can't you tell? He said and pointed to his uniform. She was half asleep. I have a package for you, the mailman said. She asked how he knew her name. He said her name was on the package. She signed for it. She took the package inside. It was heavy. It was a nice sunny day. He was at his aunt's house. His cousins were there too. He saw a frisbee on the floor. He picked it up. He loved playing frisbee. It was a fun and simple game to play. He had played it all the time. He needed someone else to play with. He asked his cousins, Do you guys want to play frisbee with me? They said yes right away. They asked their parents for permission. They were given two hours to play. 
they went to the park to play. He told his cousins to spread out. His cousins had never played frisbee before. They were excited to play. He had the frisbee in his hand. Catch! he yelled at one of his cousins. He tossed the frisbee at him. The frisbee flew in the air. It looked like a flying saucer. His cousin caught it. He tossed it back. They played frisbee for two hours. It was fun. He had a stomach ache. He did not know why. Was it something he ate? He wondered. He remembered what he ate that day. He ate eggs in the morning. He also had toast and milk. Later, he had a snack. The snack was a cookie. It was a chocolate chip cookie. Then he ate lunch. For lunch, he ate a sandwich. It was a turkey sandwich with cheese. He drank soda. Later, he had another snack. The snack was a popsicle. Then he ate dinner. For dinner, he had steak. On the side, he had vegetables and mashed potatoes. He drank soda again. That was all he ate for the day. He wondered what had caused his stomach ache. He did not drink soda often. He blamed soda. The next day came. He did not have a stomach ache anymore. He never drank soda again. She crossed the street. The street was empty. There were no people. There were no cars. It was after midnight. She walked down the street. She was not afraid. It was dangerous at night. It was especially dangerous for a girl. She did not care. She was a fighter. She knew how to defend herself. She carried pepper spray. She was ready for anything. The streets were deserted. She walked around for an hour. She took in the night air. She gazed at the stars. She looked at the closed stores. She saw the dirty curbs. She walked back home. She fell on her bed. It had been another night. She went to sleep like a baby. His hair was long. It was getting too long. It bothered him sometimes. The hair would get in his mouth. It would get on his food. It sometimes made him itchy. He thought about cutting it. He asked his friends. His friends told him not to. He asked them why. His friends said he looked fine. He did not care what his friends said. He decided to get a haircut. It was the middle of the day. He was not doing anything. He went to the salon. He walked in and sat down. He waited for the hairstylist. She was with another customer. She finished shortly. She greeted him. She cut his hair. It took twenty minutes. He looked in the mirror. He looked good. He was glad he got a haircut. He paid and thanked the hairstylist. He went on his way. They were the best of friends. People thought they were sisters. They did everything together. They shared everything with each other. They met in middle school. They were in the same college now. Sometimes they argued, 
but soon they made up. College can be tough. They took classes together. They studied together. They always helped each other. They were good students. They were from Colorado. They went home together. They lived in the same town. They knew the same people. Their family knew each other. They went back to college together. They shared one room. They acted like sisters. It's nice having a best friend. Everybody should have a best friend. It was her birthday. She was turning 16. She was born on the 5th of August. She was having a birthday party. Everybody was coming. She invited her friends. She had a lot of friends. She also had a lot of aunts and uncles. This made her happy because it meant more presents for her. She was getting ready for her party. She dressed up in her best outfit. Her mom prepared the food. Her dad went to pick up the cake. Her brother set the tables and chairs. The party was happening in the backyard. The party was in four hours. They were almost ready. Dad brought back chocolate cake. Mom cooked all the food. Her brother got the backyard ready. The birthday party was a success. He lived in a big house. It was white. The rooftop was blue. It had a white fence. There were plants in the front. There was a tall tree in the backyard. The house had a fireplace. He lit it on cold nights. He lived with his wife. They were grateful for what they had. They had to work hard. Hard work pays off. The house had three floors. It also had a basement. There were five bedrooms. They planned to have a family. The house was big enough for a family. The house had brown carpet. It also had wooden floors. There were a lot of windows. The house had nice views. The house had a reading room. They had a big library. The house had a music room, too. There was a piano inside. There was also an art room. It was a perfect house. He woke up suddenly. He heard glass shattering. It was really loud. He sat up on his bed. He listened for noise. He heard footsteps. There was someone downstairs. It was a break-in. He went to his closet and grabbed his bat. He was not afraid. He slowly went downstairs. He sneaked his way to the stairs. He looked down the staircase. It was really dark. He saw the shadow of a man. He was dressed in black. There was no light. He walked down the stairs. He did not make a sound. The shadow was going through drawers. It was a robbery. He got closer to the shadow. His heart was racing. He took a deep breath. He ran at top speed. He hit the shadow over the head. The shadow fell to the ground. He called the police. He was sad. His grandma had died. He loved his grandmother. She raised him. 
She took care of him. She had seen him grow into a man. She was the sweetest woman. She was kind to all. Everybody loved her. She departed at the age of seventy-six. She had lived a long life. He was happy for her, but he was also sad. His grandma was no longer here. He could not believe it. He remembered the last words he said to her, I love you, Grandma. I'll come to see you soon. He hugged and kissed her goodbye. She died a few days later. He cried. Her funeral was held shortly. All her family was there. Friends had also gathered. He helped carry the coffin. It was a hard thing to do. He would never forget his grandmother. The circus was in town. It was a big attraction. Everybody in town went. The circus was a lot of fun. They had clowns. The clowns juggled bowling pins and danced around. The kids liked the clowns. The circus also had magicians. The magicians performed magic tricks. The teenagers liked seeing the magician perform. The circus had animals. The animals had handlers. The handlers made the animals do tricks. A tiger went through a hula hoop. A monkey rode a tricycle. An elephant stood on two legs. Everybody liked the animal show. There were also rides. The circus stayed in town for three days. It went from town to town. It was fun to go to the circus. Henry was a strong man. He could carry heavy things. He had no problem helping you move. Mary asked Henry if he could help her. He said sure. Mary owned a lot of furniture. Henry carried it all. He put it in the moving van. He did not struggle. He was strong and able. Thank you, Henry, Mary said. Not a problem, Henry said. He was happy to help. Henry was walking down the street. He saw something as he was walking. There was a man in a car. The car would not start. There were other cars behind him. He was blocking the road. Henry took action. He went behind the car. He pushed with all his might. He moved the car. It was out of the way. The man thanked Henry. You are strong, said the man. Henry agreed. He waved goodbye. It was a family trip. They drove to the zoo. The zoo was far away. The children were excited. They had never seen wild animals before. They had only seen cats and dogs. They wanted to see bears and gorillas. The older sibling was not excited. He had been to the zoo before. He had been there too many times. It was now his tenth time. He did not want to go there any more. Mom and Dad liked the zoo. It was a good learning experience. Grandpa was also going. He was sound asleep. They arrived at the zoo. They saw all the animals. They heard a bear roar. They touched the starfishes. They saw the gorillas. It was a long day. The family got tired. 
they sat and ate food. They went back to their car. They drove back home. Her tooth was aching. She could not eat. It hurt every time she chewed. She could not even swallow. She knew what she had to do. She was scared. She had not gone to the dentist in years. It was time to make an appointment. She called their number. She set an appointment. It was for Friday at five o'clock. She was not looking forward to it. She hated going to the dentist. She was afraid of the pain, but she had no choice. She was already in pain. The tooth had to come out. The dentist told her the same. She sat back in the chair. The dentist gave her a painkiller. She still felt some pain. It was soon over. The tooth was removed. It no longer hurt to chew. It was a relief. She could now eat and chew without pain. He played the guitar. He sang the blues. It was his hobby. He was talented. Everybody told him that. He practiced all day long. His practice paid off. He was the best guitar player in town. His friends were impressed. He always carried his guitar. He carried it behind his back. He took it to the park. He sat down on a bench. He began to play. People walked by. They noticed his music. He would get tips. It was fun for him. Performing in front of others is great. He sometimes felt nervous. The feeling of excitement was greater. People called him the guitar man. He was known all around. It was his nickname. He played his guitar at school. He played his guitar on the train. Playing the guitar was his passion. He played until his fingers hurt. He stopped for a minute. He would start to play again. They camped out in the woods last night. They were alone in the woods. When they woke up in the morning, they did not know where they were at. They were lost. There was no one else around. It was just the two of them. They panicked at first. They calmed themselves down. Everything will be okay, they said to each other. They left their cell phones at home. They lit a smoke signal. No one saw it. They decided to walk back. They retraced their footsteps. It took a long time. They had walked a long distance. They got thirsty. They stopped at a stream. They drank from the stream. They continued walking. There were no signs of life. It was getting dark. They had to find people soon. Eventually, they met somebody. He was another camper. He helped them find their way to safety. It was a scary camping trip. She dropped her phone. She picked it up. She looked at the screen. She gasped. The screen was cracked. She was upset. Her phone was important. She texted on her phone regularly. She frequently made phone calls. She had internet access on her phone. 
It was her world. The phone was not cheap, but she had to buy a new one. She did not have enough money. She went to the store and talked to the salesperson. She told him that she had dropped her phone. He asked to look at the phone. She handed it to him. Can you fix it? she asked. He said yes he can. She paid to repair it. It cost less than a new phone. Her cell phone was repaired. She was very happy. She bought a protective case for it. She dropped her phone. She picked it up. She looked at the screen. She gasped. The screen was cracked. She was upset. Her phone was important. She texted on her phone regularly. She frequently made phone calls. She had internet access on her phone. It was her world. The phone was not cheap, but she had to buy a new one. She did not have enough money. She went to the store and talked to the salesperson. She told him that she had dropped her phone. He asked to look at the phone. She handed it to him. Can you fix it? she asked. He said yes he can. She paid to repair it. It cost less than a new phone. Her cell phone was repaired. She was very happy. She bought a protective case for it. He looked up. He saw the night sky. There were many stars in the sky. He looked for a while. The stars were beautiful. They were shining brightly. They looked like diamonds. He remembered a song. He looked at the moon. The moon was in the night sky. It gave the moonlight. The moon looked white. It looked like cheese. He wondered about it. A man had walked on the moon. He imagined walking on the moon. He imagined the moon being cold. He looked at the constellations. There were many of them. Constellations are what groups of stars look like. They have different names. He saw the Big Dipper. He saw the Little Dipper. He could also see Orion's Belt. It was an amazing sight. He looked up every night. He believed in aliens. He hoped to see one. The night sky is full of wonders. The house phone was ringing. She went downstairs. It was dark. She watched her steps and slowly went down the stairs. Who is calling? she wondered. She got downstairs. The phone was in the kitchen. She reached for the light switch. She turned on the lights. She squinted her eyes. The light was bright. She was blinded by the lights. The phone was still ringing. She walked to the kitchen barefoot. She stepped on a toy. She jumped in pain. She looked at the floor. She had stepped on a Lego toy. She had a son. He never picked up his toys. She reached the kitchen. The phone was still ringing. She picked up the phone. 
she looked at the caller ID. It was an unknown number. She answered the phone. Hello? There was no reply. The phone clicked. It was a wrong number. Comic books are illustrated stories. He loved comic books. He had many comic books. They were all on a shelf. His friends collected comic books, too. He sometimes traded comic books with them. He read comic books all night. He turned off the lights. He grabbed a flashlight. He sat up in bed. He wrapped a blanket around him. He stayed up reading his comic books. He had a fun time. He went to the comic book store. He went each Friday after school. The comic book store was great. It had new issues of comics. His favorite comic book hero was Spider-Man. He bought all his issues. He stayed at the comic book store. There was a couch inside. He did not always have money. He read the new comic book issues in the store. He saved his allowance for comic books. He was on the highest floor of a tall building. The building was a skyscraper. He was with his dad. His dad worked on the building. He met his dad's co-workers. They were all kind. He asked his dad a question. Is it not scary working so high up? Dad answered no. He said it was not noticeable. His son noticed. He kept thinking about it. They were so high in the sky. He imagined the building falling down. He was scared of heights. His dad told him not to think about it. He could not stop thinking about it. It was time to go home. They went down the elevator. It was a long ride. He did not want to come back. It was too frightening for him. Her name was Jane. She lived in Los Angeles. She was born there. She loved Los Angeles. She went to work in downtown Los Angeles. There are many people in Los Angeles. She drove to work every day. She looked out her window. There were people walking down the street. Some were white, some were black, and others were brown. This did not matter. They were all natives of Los Angeles. She went out with friends. They went to restaurants and shows. Los Angeles had many restaurants. Her favorite were Indian restaurants. Los Angeles has many performers. She saw famous artists and bands. It was fun going out in Los Angeles. She often came back home late. She was always safe. She never spoke to strangers. She avoided walking on streets that were not safe. Jane did want to live in Los Angeles. It was her home. It was fun going to the parade. He went to the parade every year. He never missed going. The parade was tomorrow. He was going with his girlfriend. His girlfriend's name was Mary. This year, he planned on bringing his little sister. His little sister had not gone to a parade. It was her first time going. She was excited. It was the day before the parade. They made their plan. They had to wake up early. They had to bring snacks and water. They also had to wear comfortable shoes. The parade lasted all day. The day of the parade came. 
Everything went according to plan. The parade was amazing. They saw marching bands. They saw parade floats. Some of them were big. The parade ended in the afternoon. They were tired, but they were happy. They went back home. Can we come back again? His little sister asked. He smiled at her. She knew the answer already. The music festival was today. He was ready to go. His favorite singer was performing. He packed his autograph book. He hoped to get close enough. He wanted his autograph. He was determined to get it. He left early to the music festival. He arrived in one hour. He had a hard time finding parking. He parked far from the festival. It was the closest parking he could find. He walked half a mile. He got to the festival. He found a seat near the front of the stage. He waited for the music festival to begin. It was not long before it started. The music festival began. He looked around. There were hundreds of people. Everybody was moving and jumping. The music started playing. His favorite singer went on stage. He wanted his autograph. He got onto the stage. He got his autograph. It was winter time. The snow was coming. She was excited. She waited for the snow to start falling. She looked out her window every day. The snow had not come. She asked her brother why. Her brother said it was coming. She had to wait. She waited for a few weeks. She was giving up hope. One day, she woke up. She went to her window. She did not believe it. It was finally snowing. She jumped for joy. The snow looked beautiful. She ran to her closet. She put on her winter clothes. She ran outside. She played in the snow. It was so much fun. She played all day in the snow. She made snowmen and igloos. Tomorrow she would play again. She loved the snow. He stood in the hall. He looked around him. There were many doors. He did not know which door was the right door to enter. He was lost at school. It was going to be twelve. He was going to be late. It was his first day of college. His class was in room 190. He looked at all the doors. They each had a number, but there were no rooms numbered 190. He did not know what to do. He asked a stranger. Where is room 190? The stranger did not know. He asked another stranger. She also did not know. No one knew where room 190 was. He checked his notebook, where he wrote down his classroom number. It was not room 190. It was room 140. Room 190 did not exist. He ran to room 140. He was one minute late. He entered his classroom. He quickly took a seat. He was a minute late. The professor was calling names. It was his first day of college. He was sweating. He had been running around looking for his classroom. It took him some time to find the classroom. David, the professor called. 
He raised his hand. He was out of breath. He took out his inhaler. He took a puff from his inhaler. It gave him breath. He took out his notebook and a pen. The professor started talking. He took notes. He always took notes in class. It was a good habit. He studied his notes after class. He was a good student. He wanted only good grades. Class ended at two o'clock. The teacher dismissed the students. Anna rose from her seat. She grabbed her things. She had a backpack and a sweater. She had a question to ask. She waited for the teacher. Some students also had questions to ask. There was a line to see the teacher. She got in line. She had a question about an assignment. The teacher spoke to students one at a time. She waited a while. It was finally her turn to ask. How can I help you? The teacher asked. She asked her question. The teacher gave her the answer. She was glad to hear it. She thanked the teacher, who smiled and said, "No problem." She went on her way. It was a hot day. The sun was shining brightly. There were no clouds in the sky. He walked along the street. He was going home. He was hot and tired. He could not wait to get home. He was almost there. It was nearly one hundred degrees. There was not another soul in sight. Everybody was at home. His car was not working. He had to walk to his bank. He did not know it was so hot. The bank was not too far. The heat made it seem far away. His throat was dry. He was thirsty for water. He walked with sweat on his back. He arrived home. He went straight to the kitchen. He drank a big cup of water. He took off his clothes. He went to the bathroom. He took a cold bath. It was so refreshing. He stayed in the bath. What is your name? He asked her. My name is Linda. She answered. What is your name? Linda asked. My name is Brian. He answered. They knew each other's names. They became friends. Brian was tall and skinny. Linda was a little shorter than Brian. She was also skinny. Brian and Linda had black hair. Brian asked Linda if she was busy. She told Brian she was not. Want to go to the coffee shop? Brian then asked. Linda said sure. They walked to the coffee shop. It was nearby. Brian opened the door for Linda. Linda said thank you. They bought their coffee. They sat down to drink it. They talked to each other. Brian learned about Linda. Linda learned about Brian. The two were alike. Brian walked Linda home. It was nice meeting you, Linda said to Brian. Likewise, Brian replied. It was a hot summer day. She was in her room. The fan was on, but it blew hot air. She did not want to be home. It was too hot. She thought of what to do. Her cell phone vibrated. She picked it up. She received a text message. It was from her friend. The text read, "Let's go to the pool." 
she replied with yes. She got ready immediately. She grabbed her towel, sunscreen, sunglasses, and shampoo. She also packed her bathing suit. She went to the pool. Her friends were in the pool. She went to the lockers. She changed into her bathing suit. She applied her sunscreen. She jumped in the pool. The water was cool and refreshing. She splashed around with her friends. She no longer felt hot. She stayed in the pool all day. It was winter. The streets were covered with snow. The air was cold outside. She was at a friend's house. They did not know what to do. She sat in the living room. Her friend sat beside her. They put on a movie. The movie was boring. They stopped playing the movie. She got out a board game. They started playing. The board game was missing pieces. They stopped playing. What do we do now? She asked her friend. Let's go ice skating, the friend said. They went to an ice skating rink. They left in a car together. They arrived at the place. There were a lot of people skating. They bought their pass. They put on their figure skates. They skated on the ice. She slid a couple of times. They ice skated for hours. It was so much fun. They left around eight o'clock. They went back the next day. It was nighttime. He was home using his computer. His friend messaged him. The message was an invitation. He was invited to the theaters. He said yes to the invitation. He shut down his computer. He got ready to leave. He grabbed his wallet and drove to the theaters. His friends were waiting for him. What movie are we watching? He asked his friends. They were going to watch a scary movie. He did not like scary movies. He was a big chicken when it came to watching scary movies. He watched the movie anyway. They bought their tickets and went inside. They took their seats. The movie started to play. It was the scariest. He had ever seen. Everybody went home. After he got home, he was too scared to sleep. He turned on all his lights. He regretted watching that movie. It was the middle of the day. He looked out his window. He saw his lawn. The grass looked long. He decided to mow the lawn. He stepped into his garage. His mower was in there. He got his lawn mower. He turned it on. It started moving. The engine made a loud noise. The engine sputtered and stopped. He got off his lawn mower. He inspected the engine. It had broken. He took it back inside the garage. He opened his toolbox. He repaired his lawn mower. He turned it on again. It was working. He mowed his lawn. It took him half an hour to finish. He took his lawn mower back inside. He went back into the house. He looked out the window. The lawn looked nice. He loved his lawn.